All right, welcome back. Greetings, guys and gals. Uh, I mean, wait, I said that backwards. <laughs> so, welcome back. Greetings, guys and gals. To Phoenix, sorry, whatever. Gord is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. We're continuing uh, turn on the mice. Defense is ready, Ron. Huh? Yeah, they go right into it. Yeah. Very well. Apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Montgomery, your opening statement. Very well, an opening statement, so... Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, of course. A prediction. Well... Oh, shoot. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. <laughs> I'll call my witness now. Uh, right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. Is that, is that mysterious bookshop owner? <laughs> Pardon me. He's sleeping on the stand. Witness, state your profession. What about his name? <coughs> what? Pardon me. I'm, I'm the proprietor of the restaurant, the wet noodle at Gold Lake. And I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him this right. Bah. I have predicted this trial went in three minutes. Stop asking truth questions and cooperate. Does the name matter though? I think so. But no one said they knew his name. The witness will state his name. Oh. Eh. Ah. Well, uh, I'm not really sure, yep. What do you mean? My memory. Your honor. The witness does not remember anything beyond the last seven years. Ergo, we cannot recall this he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we, witness? Alright, testimony, the night of the murder. Hey, it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, yeah? I was in the restaurant where I rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang, yep. Yeah? When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just uh, floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. He's so fixated on ending it in three minutes, yeah. like... Judge, your verdict now. <laughs> the, his testimony doesn't prove that Edgeworth... No, he just says, I'm at it, and say... Yeah. Oh, like, uh, yes. Mr. Wright. No, we don't need to cross-examine the wrong camera What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Very well. You may begin. <laughs> Holy sh**. Excuse me, Mr. Bunker. I mean, holy crap, I'll bleep that up. Three minutes just passed. Uh, I see. Well, then let's take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. At least the judge is taking a bit of control of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was the night of the 24th, yeah. Yeah, you heard that. It's in the restaurant where you rest bullets. And I heard a bang. Yeah, let's press on these bangs. So maybe now we can finally bring up the three shots then. Yeah. And where did the bang seem to come from? Ah, ah, from the lake, I figured. 
Are you certain? Yeah. Good. Continue. When I looked out the window, I saw a bell just have floating on the lake. Was there something on the boat? Or in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figured there was two men out there, Ian. But you couldn't see them clearly. Yep, at the time, that is. At the time. <clears throat> another bang. So we saw them there on the first bang? But we have a photo that says there was nothing on the lake the first bang. Is that the proof we need? I don't know. So you heard two gunshots total. Yeah. That's what Lana said in her testimony yesterday. Yeah, but what about the third gunshot? He just said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what did the man look like? And wasn't he going to say something? The man said something. The old man, right? He did? I thought that's what he said. Okay. But then he didn't remember, and he said he'll remember for the trial. Right, 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 yeah. Okay. By your window. Yeah, by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. I have a bad feeling about this. Uh -oh. it sounds like Von Karma wanted that time. That man was a defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. So that's what he so said. It's edge for Presumably, yeah. It seems like we're condemning the edge for Are you sure? Maybe that's why Von Karma was happy when we did that. Right. Uh oh. <laughs> Dad? Dead certain, Keith. He said I can't believe he's dead and he was walking by, too. <coughs> oh, jeez. Pardon me. My goodness, are you sure the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. Oh, he fell over. Must have fallen asleep. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. <laughs> he lured me to cross examine me, so we could set me up for the But if we didn't cross examine, we would have lost anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, what, what were you going to say? I was going to say it's kind of ironic that I'm sneezing, but I'm dressed as Phoenix because there's a part of our Phoenix has a cold in their hand. <laughs> oh. But we're not at that point yet. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. She's going to have to make another objection. Yeah. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. Yes, you should have brought an objection for us. I'd better act quicker, this will be over. Object for what? Object to the Edgeworth being the killer? Well, okay. This seems like a waste of though. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's court that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing the man firing his left hand. Exactly. That's easily explained. He could have wiped the prints after he fired. You aren't knowing the truth of the matter here. Everything in this is testimony is true. The judge is lost in shot. Thought, what should I do? I guess I have. Well, like, I can't object to anything if. Well, I'll do it anyway. Objection! <clears throat> Your Honor, the witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead, but his words is all we have. If he were telling a lie... Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you are yet to realize this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Nick, do we have evidence? No good, there's nothing I can't do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Oh, she oh, transformed. Can you hear me, sis? We you need your help. Nick needs you. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. Oh, excuse me. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. <sighs> <laughs> ah, 
tea with putting pepper in my pillow. <laughs> the court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. Wait, Mia's gonna come and object. She probably will. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! <clears throat> this court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Guilty. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. To be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. The court is adjourned. Was that supposed to happen, or did we screw up somewhere? Wait! Who, who was that just now? Me? Is it Mia? Huh? Wait, Larry. Larry? Didn't see that coming. I thought it was gonna be uh, Mia. What are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. Uh, I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder while well, Larry's saving the day. I wasn't sure about it till just yesterday. But today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Wow, okay. Didn't see that coming. Order! <laughs> What's the meaning of this? Oh, he's probably gonna say we've already given a verdict. Uh, no changing the, the yeah, verdict has been decided. I call for a judgment. One moment, Mr. Von Carver. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did, a gunshot, that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's just not right. I'll testify, let me testify. Technically, he is a witness. Yeah. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Oh, Nick, this is it. Larry's giving us one final chance at this. <laughs> Only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edward just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. That's true. You're right. Okay. Your Honor. If there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Wow, okay. Larry, good for you. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? Well, it's the first time he said now to Von Karma. The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. Yeah. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Hmm. Boy, that was a one <laughs> crazy turn of events in there. Holy crap, December 27th it is now. Alright. That was too yeah. close. Oh, sorry, Edgeworth's back. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmm. I've seen worse. Yeah, yeah that's it's right. weird having voice in front of me. I was just wondering what Larry plans to do in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he'd been looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Hey, he could have been right next to them. Yeah. All right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night? Yep. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It's nothing. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. Yeah, good question. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Well, I guess the guy from the boat shack could have shot him. Sniped him, you mean? Well, yeah. I don't know. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor, and the boat in front of me. Of the boat in front of me. 
I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. If you wouldn't have picked it up, that would make this so much easier. I see. Right. Yeah. This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Oh, is that because Larry is always kind of... Larry kind of threw it off. Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. It was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Actually, yeah, 15 minutes right now. Oh, yeah. Almost 16. Alright. Larry's testimony now. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court on everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't miss this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Oh, I'm kind of ready to have time to prepare as well as I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Uh, could this be Von Karma's first defeat? That night I was out on the boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I, I found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in the barrel and shot dock. Did he steal the boat though? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Yeah, because we didn't see the boat out on the first bang, did we? Hmm. Okay. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any matter, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. So there's supposed to be lots of holes. Hopefully. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Hey, that's what I like to say. People ask me, where are you going? I say forward. Something wrong, Mr. Wright. There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. <clears throat> uh -huh. Um, well, okay, first off. First of all, what time was that? Oh, it was after 11 o'clock when I heard, went out of the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So why wait until the coast was clear, so to speak? And why we out on a boat at such a late hour? He's looking for something. It's the steel center, I think, right? Looking for something? Yeah. Mr. Buss, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely, he was hunting for this Gordy. Aha! Uh -huh. You know, it wouldn't surprise me what if, it, <laughs> if that was tr the truth. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. Alright, what time was that? <clears throat> well, let's see. I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12, yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? <laughs> People use watches these days, Larry. Yeah, sundial. I've never heard that before. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I, I was too sure about that. I looked around, you know? Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real funny that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. So the, you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Well, Nick. 
It was a pretty wishy washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I just about to start on the contradictions. Sorry, maybe she could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Alright, so what can we call her next year? He was out on the boat on the lake. He was looking for something and found it. So he quietly slipped the boat back in the ram shop dog. I just uh, was thinking about going home under this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. Did we present the photo then? Maybe the one where it wasn't there? We could say that this is what we saw. Where is that photo? Oh, this one. One of these. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. No. This. You think? Wait. Just wait a second. It was taken at 11.50. And that was about when he was done, right? Yeah. He said it was about an hour, so maybe that, that confirms it, basically. So do I need to present that one? Maybe wait on it just for now and see what else it says. Should I press one or something? I think so. We press, pressed everything, didn't we? I think so. Dude, the first gunshot he went home. We're still stuck with this metal detector. Yeah. Oh, we never got to use the dog or... No. Um, actually, maybe... There were two gunshots just, af just after midnight. Present that to where he... Says he had saw the first shot. Because he said he left at like 11.50, right? Yeah. Okay. Present that there? It has to do with the time, I think. Just after that, yeah? Yeah, try it. Oh, maybe it's not here. <laughs> I think we're on the right line of track, though. Or right line of making it. No, we're gonna get shot here. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> He's so vague in his testimony, it's hard to directly contradict. But he didn't notice the boat. Maybe I'll be press one. Yeah, see what we say here. Was there a boat on the lake? Ooh, that's a long report. That gets his bits well, over some. We know that there was a hole on the lake, and we didn't see it. He's, but he just says he doesn't know. Maybe we try what we first thought? What? They wanna... Represent the... Oh. The photo of the blank lake? To the... He was out on the lake, was looking for something, which is a steel samurai. He quietly slipped it back. When you see him, we'll go home and he... So this one? But that it's would not make a... sense, though, because it's not there in the first photo. But this isn't a contradiction, then it's more like a confirmation. Exactly, yeah. Still. Well, we have- we could try it, but... You want? Or maybe- The only thing is it's not really a contradiction, it's a confirmation. So... How about the one about the bang? Where did the sound come from? This is tough. This is pretty big. Oh. I'm thinking maybe try presenting that there. This one. I think that's the thing you have to contradict, yeah. So this one. Maybe not. This is tough. Because it's that confirms it though. Hmm. Mm. This is pretty tough. He didn't notice the boat. Well, how would he not notice the boat if there were two gunshots there? Yeah. Alright, so the This is all stuff we don't really need right now, I think. Mean. The Earth's Twelve Companion. This seems to be important too. 
but I don't know where he would contradict that because he never says a time in his testimony. Because just after midnight, that makes sense because I think the other thing said 11.50 and this thing was, she said after midnight, so that's confusing. I don't know. Cool. If you need a walkthrough, let me know. What about this one? Did we do this? I think we tried that anyway. He went home, but then would he have heard the second gunshot? It was fired immediately out. You'd think so, yeah. At 12.15. That seems weird for there to be such a time gap in between. Because this was 11.50, that one was 12.15. It's like a whole 25 minutes after. Yeah. Maybe present Lotta's deposition here? Oh, I think we found something. Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang. You sure? That's what I said. See? Like he did the second one. But Miss Lotta Hart <laughs> testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you get to treat me nice and stuff, okay? Don't badger the witness, Mr. Mons. He's badgering the witness. It's his witness. What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. No? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, I might have missed the other gunshot. I, I was listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, not my headphones. So he was listening to the radio and it couldn't hear it because of the radio? Order, order, and stop that booing. <laughs> the answer is going, Mr. Butts, you were listening to a radio on earphones. Yes, so what? what? Was that a crime? I listen to my radio, everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Your opinion is irrelevant. Yeah. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Should we continue the testimony? Uh, yeah, what's he listening to on the radio? There's a lot of witness to continue his testimony. Ah, nothing is more peaceful than a lawyer who doesn't know what he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't. <coughs> Excuse me. If there were. Any other way out of this, believe me. But Larry Hurt. Alright, new testimony. It's lonely being a lot of <coughs> Christmas Eve, especially when you're sick too. That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud, like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when he heard it, when I heard it too. Well, what was he saying? You were listening to your radio at high volume. Yeah, what's the <coughs> Excuse me, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was possibly nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor? The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when <coughs> he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? Disc jockey? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. What an informational <coughs> video about uh, radios and DJs. Yeah. 
I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe we're continuing this charade. What, Larry heard. So what exactly was he saying to the, or what exactly was the DJ saying? That's what we want to know. Can you prove that? No, of course you can't. That I could prove it. I just remember the moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? Yeah, this is important. What did he say? Mr. Wright. That's irrelevant. Please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Vodkama has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we, sh we should care. <laughs> you should care. You should care. What should people we? think of you? We should Despite my singing, we should care, Your Honor. <laughs> of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if you don't ask me? Very well, fine. Mr. Bus, please test the call. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just what she said, hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? I, yeah, I know what's going on here. Of course I am. She said this in this real sexy voice. Oh, so it was a girl DJ. Hmm, maybe Von Kummer's right. I'm not sure how that. Hope this at all. This is the most ludicrous history I've ever heard. <sighs> but there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got a precedent on we get to the bottom of what it is. I guess I'll press everything else because I don't remember. So you turned on the radio? Right. I just want to hear someone's voice, you know. You don't know what it's like up there. Alone on Christmas Eve, alone. I shouldn't have said anything. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? Irrelevant, I'm listening to. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Bonds, how loud was your radio sent to that night? Real boom. <laughs> loud. Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on? Yup. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. You could tell we could take the classroom down a couple decibels? Yes, of course he said that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that got shot. Oh. We saw this part already. Go to the statement about where he says it's almost Christmas. And then let's look through our evidence, because I think that's the thing I have to contradict. Like the next one? The thing that was added? This has got to be something we contradict. It would make sense for this one because it's 11.50. But what about the one with the actual shooting? It was taken at 12.15, right? Which is after Christmas. Just after midnight. Yeah, maybe this, this is probably better, actually. That's what I was thinking about. Larry, are you absolutely sure that what you're saying is correct? Oh, what's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're gonna scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Well, you just said you you scared. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That must be the case, yes. Oh shoot, where's the paper? I had a, I was waiting for this to happen, ready to go. You can continue speaking while I find oh, this thing. But that contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Found it. Both Miss Lotta Hart and the old man uncle said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. 
Oh, so that maybe that is the third shot. Maybe. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. Hey, what? I thought you said that. Mm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim that he heard a gunshot before midnight? Yeah, because we heard one. Larry's not mistaken. We saw it at 11.15. We heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. And that's what I think that's what I think is. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Take that! Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lauder Hart, with her automatic camera. Timestamp on the photo reads December 20, 24, 11, 50 p.m. Oh, yeah? <laughs> but there's nothing on the lake in this photo, in this picture. Oh, and Larry didn't see anything. Yeah. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown on the photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. The camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a, it is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes before midnight. After, I think said. <laughs> oh. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots within a 25 yeah, that's that's right. the exact time that is paused between them. I thought that was weird. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. The camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed through the camera. That's... well, actually that did happen. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man! Clear! Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there is no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. The camera? Because uh, it was set to loud noise at the time. And she toned it down later, right? When my sneeze. Uh... Wait, because today we just learned that it takes sneezes. But she... I thought she changed the camera to make it do that. I think it's that. I think that's probably the only thing that God that could do. Like he's asking for proof that it, for why the camera went off. Oh, is he? Or wait. Or, or what? Yeah, it needs to be more specific there. Because if that's not it, then it's got to be the air tank. Does the air tank? Oh no, 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 wait. The air tank was already off at that point. Yeah, the air tank. Went... I can't remember the question. Yeah, neither can I. <laughs> I think the the thing was. Um, I, well, I think he had to present as a camera, but I could be wrong. But that's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> Mr. Wright, is that a smirk I see? Oh, Your Honor, sorry, I wasn't really sure about that. The evidence. Oh, no, that's not it. Don't show evidence if you're not confident. I'll ask you again. Can you prove that the loud noise was indeed a gunshot? <laughs> okay. Well, the it's pistol, maybe because it was fired says... twice. Either Lotta Hart's deposition or the pistol itself. Fired three times. This is a pistol. Oh, there you go. This is my evidence. Oh, do I do Something about this pistol is bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots, where the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. 
The third shot was was the shot Larry heard before midnight. Hola, hola. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen when I don't know. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah, what's our unique? I haven't, I haven't. Huh? Remember the case with the steel samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murder in this case had the same idea as the murder in that case. No, the Vasquez. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty. Yeah, he can still declare guilty, too. Yeah, I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with that. Right, I mean, is it safe? Safe. Already. We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? All right, Dick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. It has it? The entire case? What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So, you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witnesses' photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. You couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 50 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Well, I guess if he was shot at the first <laughs> shot and then dragged out or something. No. We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the shoot on the photo says 0 15. Which is Larry heard the dead shot 25 minutes before. That's the 24 hour version of saying midnight. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. So he was killed first and then thrown in. Well, yeah, but then. Point? But how does that guy stand up on the boat? So it might be, it maybe must someone, else be on somebody the boat. else, yeah. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. The murderer and Hammond, Edgeworth and the murderer, Edgeworth and Hammond. Well, it can't be the last one if our theory is true. But Edgeworth said himself Edgeworth that was he was for on sure the boat, so it has to be Edgeworth and the murderer. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 1150, he assumed the, the, guys. the guise of Mr. Hammond had met Edgeworth. What? What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer of them. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Miles is Ruth Lana Hart, I don't know. It can't be the first two. I think it's the old man. And we don't so know his name, know so... Man. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah, again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, the old man. 
At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where does he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest the real scene of this crime was not on the boat. Maybe it was in his place. What? The wet noodle. What if he... Well then, where did the murder take place? So the judge would have really, really took place. Right there, right? That's what we're assuming. Yeah. yeah. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way, he could meet the victim without anyone seeing him. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. Whoa. What's going on? Wait, oh, that's Larry, I guess, looking at me. Yeah, that night he was out on the lake searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he starts to head for home, he hears a gunshot. So that was the first he shot, a gunshot, Your Honor. Where he killed Hammond, and then the other two were out on the lake? But why would they shoot out on the lake? Was it smoke screen or something? Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would he be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. But why would they fire it twice on the... Mr. Wright, on the lake? What happened that night on Gold Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, <coughs> I might just be able to figure this out. Ugh. Ooh. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to a shop. Whoa, that's Hammond. <coughs> Excuse me. That was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. So in other words, this old man is not as seen out as we think. And he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. <coughs> oh, okay. He thought we were his kids, but... He, couldn't they do a criminal for... Couldn't they do a background check on his kids then? Yeah, what if those actually are his name? Yeah. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Right. Yeah, who cares about the boat? Yeah, the boat shot Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. So it was like a diversion thing. Why would he shoot twice if he didn't need to hit anyone? Or he was trying to hit it on this work. Right. Uh, details, details. No, this is right. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you can lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Okay, well, yes, yeah, so the pictures will be taken, I guess. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lift, lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot next. The murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... You think Edgeworth would have jumped out of the boat if he saw a guy firing at him? Yeah. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. And he just swam all the way? to the, the shore. But he's an old man nevertheless. Yeah. I see. They had to be pretty close now. There's someone looking from the edge of the lake. Oh, him over. It would appear that one of the men on the boat had to shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot tw twice to draw attention to the boat. Mm. Once you realize that everything else falls into place. The boat caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and then threw the body into the lake. You think he would have done that before? Right, brought it. No, no, but if he brought it out with him, Edgeworth would have seen that. Well, and before Edgeworth even showed up. Oh, no. Yeah. But I thought it. Okay, he, assumed, he, he assumed Mr. Hammond's position. Yeah, well, I guess he wouldn't have the coat in that case. This is what happens, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. (laughs) 
Okay. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Oh, wait, he's coming back. I think we'll end it there because we're already at like 50 minutes. So um, next time we'll continue with uh, the court and uh, we'll see what uh, the old man has to say this time. We've figured out more about him than he leads on. Yeah. Let's figure out next time.